Join me as we take a look at one of the most luxurious ways you can ever cruise in, Cunard Queen's Grill. I'm Gary Benbridge of Tips for Travelers. I'm going to take a look at Queen's Grill and I'm going to take a look specifically at the accommodation, the dining, the facilities and the extra little perks and benefits that makes Queen's Grill so different and so special. As I tell you a little bit about the Queen's Grill accommodation, I'm going to show you around a couple of examples of different cabins. First of all, I'm going to show you what the master suite, the Coronia suite on board Queen Victoria looks like. Cunard is a very traditional line. It's been going for an extremely long time and they still follow a very classic way of cruising. So there's three key groups on board the ship and they are slightly segregated. So you have Queen's Grill, which is a little bit like traveling first class if you were flying. You have Princess Grill, which is a little bit like if you were flying club or business. And then they have Britannia. Now, within Britannia, they have Britannia Club and Britannia. Now, the, whilst the bulk of the cabins on board are Britannia and they range from inside to balcony, the ultimate is Queen's Grill. There are a range of cabins ranging from Grand Suites, Master Suites, Penthouse Suites and Queen Suites and they all graded between Q1 and Q6 with Q1 being a Grand Suite, Q6 being a Queen Suite. Now the cabins on board Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth are the same. Our Queen Mary 2 has slightly different cabins because it's a different shaped ship. Queen's Grill cabins are generally pretty spacious and they have a fairly classic decor, a feel to them which is sort of Art Deco inspired and try to hark back to the glory days of cruising, the sort of the 40s, 50s and 60s. The great thing as you probably noticed in the Queen's Grill is you have a bath and a shower. Now on board both Queen Elizabeth and Queen Victoria you have a separate bath and shower. On Queen Mary 2 in some of the lower grades of the Q5 and Q6 it tends to be a shower within the bath. Another type of suite on board is the penthouse suite which is both Q3 and Q4. So here's an example of a penthouse suite. You have butler service in all of the Queen's Grill suites and you'll also have a cabin steward looking after you. You also have a complimentary bar which gets replenished based on what you want. You also get to choose some spirits. So whilst the bar has things like beers and soft drinks in, you can then choose spirits from a menu. You get daily fruit. You have a turn down service every night. You have coffee and tea making facilities with a very nice Ely coffee making machine. When you arrive, you get champagne on arrival and you get a treat, which is normally strawberries dipped in chocolate. Another great thing is a pillow concierge. So you can choose from a wide range of different types of pillows. And in the evenings you get served canapes. The cabins are spread out across different decks and that's because most of the Queen's Grill cabins are midships which of course is the best part of the ship to be if you're in rough waters. So hopefully you can see from that the cabins are pretty luxurious. They have a certain feel, a kind of look to them and they are I think very tastefully and very beautifully done. So the great thing about being on Queen's Grill, certainly on Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth, is you have a dedicated grills area. So this is controlled by your key card and it's up on deck 11. And in this area you have a small lounge which is also a bar so you can meet here for drinks before or after meals. It's also where you have the concierge desk, you have a dedicated concierge who will do things like book tours for you, give you advice about things around the ship and basically answer any of the queries that you may have. But also up here you have the Queen's Grill restaurant and the Princess Grill restaurant and also a dedicated deck. So up above the restaurants is a very large deck where you can go and sunbathe and there's another lower deck which is just outside of the grills lounge. Now on Queen Mary 2 it is much more spread out. It's not a de as dedicated area as it is on the Victoria and the Elizabeth. So many people think that Cunard ships are very segregated. Most of the ship is open so the main decks, public areas, the theater, the casino, that's all open to everybody. There's only certain parts of the ship that are restricted to Queen's Grill. So it's much more around the accommodation and the dining experience in practice. Queen's Grill restaurant is pretty magnificent. And the great thing about eating in Queen's Grill is you have your dedicated table and dedicated staff. So you have the same table and you have the same waiting staff the whole time you're on board. And there are lots of tables for two. So you can obviously choose combinations of two, four or a larger table. Most people tend to choose smaller tables and eat with whoever they're traveling with. The other tables are quite nearby you so you do get to talk and meet other people. There's also normally a very large table for about eight people in the center of the restaurant which tends to more 
be for solo travelers, but you'll often find couples who do want to interact and mix with other people will have that big table. Now, the important thing about eating in Queen's Grill is you have an enormous choice. You have breakfast menu, which is absolutely enormous, pretty much anything you can think of. You have a lunch, again, with multiple courses and lots to choose from. You have soups, you have starters, you have salads, you have sandwiches, you have main courses, you have desserts. Now, dinner is really important. Dinner is from 6.30 to 9. It's open seated dining, so anytime you want to go, so you have a daily menu which consists of starters with soups, main courses and desserts. What you also have is an a la carte menu. This stays the same every day and it has an enormous choice. Now very importantly on the a la carte is a series of dishes which you can pre-order. Things like duck à l'orange, you have Dover sole, you can have lobster thermidor, chateaubriand and beef wellington. So these you, you need to pre-order at lunchtime. You can also order off menu. So again, at least by lunchtime, you can order anything you want. So if you perhaps feel like roast chicken for dinner or you want shepherd's pie or cottage pie, you can order off menu. Also very importantly, it's not on the menu, but also for dinner, you can ask to have caviar as a starter. So that's a little sort of inside trick. If you do want caviar, it's not shown on any menu, but you basically can pre-order that at lunchtime and have that as your starter. Now, the other thing that you have in the Queen's Grey area are two great features, one of which is al fresco dining. So particularly if you're cruising through warmer parts of the world, you can also have your meals outside in the al fresco area. But another great feature is afternoon tea. Now Cunard is famous for the afternoon tea and the main afternoon tea takes place down in the Queen's Room. However, if you're traveling in Queen's Grill or Princess Grill, they do afternoon tea up in the Queen's Grill. Now sometimes it's served in the lounge, but many of the times it's served in the Princess Grill restaurant every day at 3.30 except normally for embarkation day. Now, I think the food in Queen's Grill is absolutely magnificent. It really is top notch. I would say it's the best food I've had anywhere. Beautiful quality and absolutely magnificent. So the main facilities then, just to recap for Queen's Grill, is you have the dedicated lounge, you have the dedicated deck, you have the dedicated concierge, and of course your dedicated dining areas. So what other perks are there of traveling in Queen's Grill? Now these end up being quite useful. So you have priority check-in. So when you come in, there's normally a specific grills check-in area. So sometimes when you check in, bear in mind there could be up to 2,000 passengers checking in. So it's always great to have a dedicated check-in which moves much quicker and much faster than if you're traveling, say, in Britannia. So that's a perk. You also have priority embarkation and disembarkation. So you get onto the ship first and you also get off the ship first. You might be disembarking as early as say 8 a.m. in the morning where the last Britannia guests only get off at 10 a.m. in the morning. Now you also have priority with tenders if you're in tender ports. Now depending on the ship you're on sometimes that's only for some of the higher Queen's Grill so Q1s, Q2, Q3 so the Grand Suites, the Master Suites and the Penthouses but there normally is some sort of priority with tendering. So if you're not going on a tour and you're on a tender port, being in Queen's Grill has some perks. But the main perks about being in the Queen's Grill are really the accommodation and the dining. That's the real, real big difference because there's not lots of dedicated facilities. So what will it cost to cruise in Queen's Grill? A Queen's Grill suite will start from at least $800 per cabin for two people per day. So you should expect to pay between $500 and $1,000 per person per day. Queen's Grill is definitely a very luxurious way of cruising and is probably one of the most luxurious and special ways of cruising. There's a lot of energy and effort put into making the accommodation feel very luxurious and very plush, very high quality. The dining is magnificent, the service is very attentive, and then you have all those other little perks like the complimentary bar, the concierge, priority embarkation. But really, the real heart of Queen's Grill is the accommodation and the dining. So if you are thinking of splashing out, do take a look at Queen's Grill. If you found this video helpful, I'd love it if you gave a like or a thumbs up. But even more importantly, please subscribe to Tips for Travelers and get much more travel inspiration, advice and tips.